Yes, I ride motorbikes just for fun, as a hobby, but never raced in one. I love street bikes, I love dirt bikes. So when I was a kid, we used to go a lot to the desert, and I had a quad, and I had a buggy, but like, when I grew up, I always wanted, since I was young, to have a dirt bike and a street bike. So when I went to the States for my master's, I got the opportunity to get my license and just do it for fun. Mashael al is a Saudi rally driver who raced in the 2022 Dakar Rally, known as the world's toughest and biggest. Drivers in that race can choose their off-road vehicle. Motorcycles are the riskiest option. The majority of deaths and injuries happen to those who've entered the competition in the motorbike category. Michelle has loved driving since she was a child growing up in the eastern province, Saudi Arabia's largest province, and a region known for its fossil-dusted secret caves and rugged rock formations. I'm Nadia Michelle, and this is TMR Thrill Seekers. I have... Uh really special uh, place in my heart for bikes and the uh, dirt bikes, but uh, it's definitely uh, a dangerous uh, category. So I stopped riding and just started focusing on T3 because like in T3 and T4, you're really safe because you have, you, you have like all the FIA, FIA regulation and the belt and the humiliated car vehicle and all that. So it's, it's way safer where you can have fun and still be safe. Because I followed Dakar for the last two years, and I talked to a lot of champions in dirt bikes, and uh, I've seen them crying in Dakar, and I've seen some get injured. I, I've no, I've actually one time, uh, unfortunately, a biker passed away. So not only in Dakar but as well in other races. You always hear such incidents, and at the end, you want to go back home to your family. Instead of a motorcycle, Michelle entered the rally using a custom four-wheel off-road vehicle. When it first started in 1977, the Dakar rally took drivers across the Sahara Desert, from Paris to Dakar, Senegal, hence the name. But in 2008, a coup in Mauritania and the security concerns that followed led to the cancellation of the race. The following year, in 2009, and for the next 10 years, the Dakar Rally took place in South America, across the Peruvian desert, the dizzying altitudes of Bolivia, and northern Argentina. Then, in 2020, the Dakar Rally moved again, this time to the Middle East in Saudi Arabia. Over 4,000 participants registered from all over the world, among them only 52 women, including Mashail. I don't know why people always ask questions like, but men, but women, then treat it separately. I don't, again, I don't see that. So I'm not a fan of questions that try to separate men and women, just let's say humans, you know. If you ask me, I never see any sport as, as a guy or a, or a female sport. I don't see that at all since I was young. Because I used to play basketball, I used to play soccer, I'm a scuba diver, I'm a free diver. I just love whatever sport or adventure I want to do. I just go for it. So I've never seen it that separate where women have their own sport and men as well. But uh, for me, I think because it's a dangerous sport, to be frank with you. It's a definitely a risky sport. And not everyone wants to take that risk. Saudi Arabia is not especially known for its female athletes, but that's changing. The country began introducing social reforms over the last few years, granting women freedoms previously prohibited under Saudi Arabia's strictly enforced Islamic law. For instance, women finally got permission to drive in 2017. And since 2018, women finally can attend sporting events. But laws don't tell the whole story about Saudi women. All I've heard is like, support support i've seen is support 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 even on social media i'm not a fan i'm not a big fan of social media but i do it because that's the way for me to to connect with my supporters right all i've heard all i've seen is support and love and uh, that keeps me going even if there are challenges like i cannot get into that race because i couldn't lock that sponsor or for example i couldn't lock that vehicle or or any other reason just seeing the amount of support from not only Saudis, but Middle Easterns and international 
front really keeps me going. Nowadays, Saudi has changed dramatically, like in a good way. And I'm sure you guys noticed that as well. I mean, we're having the biggest, best races in the world from Formula One, Formula E, Extreme E to Dakar. And you see, I mean, that's a great opportunity for us. And people started understanding what's motorsports and they see the female and male element in that and how both are crucial, you know. So, no, for sure. All I got is, is all love and support, alhamdulillah. If you go back to history, you compare when you compare Saudi to other countries, you'll see Saudi is just going through the normal process and phase. But because it wasn't established that long time ago, we're just living that phase right now. But other countries lived such phases and they moved forward, you know. Now, during the race, a lot of females come abroad to two races in Saudi, right? In Dakar and other races. So if you can hear their comments, you'll be amazed. You know, one lady said, I've never seen a country that respects females such as Saudi. And yes, my friend, that's the real Saudi. And that's why I'm really happy that tourism opened in Saudi so people can come and see the real culture and what Saudi does to women and the real Saudi, you know, the real Saudi. Saudi Arabia's Vision 2030 is a plan to modernize the country that was initiated by Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. The country is heavily investing in sports and culture and fast becoming a Middle East hub for festivals, extreme sports and cultural events. MDL Beast Soundstorm and Winter at Tantora are just a few of the annual music festivals that attract globally known artists like David Guetta and Andrea Bocelli. And in 2022, Saudi Arabia will host the Formula One Grand Prix for the second time around. The list is growing, and the Dakar Rally is a jewel in MBS's crown. So the Dakar Rally is, they call it the the toughest rally in the world. We race for 12 days, six days, and then a rest day, and then another six days. Everyone asks me, how does it feel? I I always say, I cannot compare it to other rallies, because I've done Baja, uh, world Championship Baja and World Championship Rally Raid, like um, Hayat, a couple of months ago. But Rally is, uh, Dakar is completely different. It's uh, a race where you get to challenge yourself physically, uh, mentally. And uh, for sure, it's a, it's a different experience. The January 2022 race started in Hail and ended in Jeddah. It's an 8,000-kilometer route that takes drivers through canyons and cliffs in the Neom region and along the Red Sea coastline. We started in Hayil, we went to al we went to Shagir, we went to Rial, all different areas. So we'll go all around Saudi. And that's what I like about the Dakar, because you're never bored. Different scenery, different ter- terrain, it's amazing. It's all desert, and um, I was expecting more dunes this year, but I felt it had more um, flat, wadi, tight roads more than dunes. But we, we've like we've faced like big dunes for sure. I mean, the biggest so far in my life. Dunes are mounds of sand formed by the wind, usually along the beach or in a desert. They form when wind blows sand into a sheltered area behind an obstacle, and they grow as grains of sand accumulate. Driving in the desert requires some basic skills, like knowing when and how to deflate your tires. A softer tire, deflated to between 15 and 18 psi, molds to the shape of the sand rather than cutting through it like a knife, creating more grip area. But the golden rule for dune driving is to always go straight up and straight down. So if it's your first time on Dune, you get scared because you don't you don't you will not be you don't understand the physics of it. Because the, the dune will look steep, will look huge, but once you get used to it and you understand how it feels, big dunes aren't actually are one of the easiest uh, in, in rallies. because uh, it's very simple. You go straight up and then you slow down a little bit. When you reach the top, and always I go to the side a little bit just to understand what's on the other side and just learn how to exit. So for me, dunes are are like uh, super fun and we're used to that in Saudi. So one time I was going up the, of a dune and then a competitor decided to just stop and reverse and he hit my car. So some things 
you cannot control, just some sudden unexpected uh, incidents from others. Michelle and her Italian co-pilot, Jacopo Cerruti, drove a T3 built by South Racing, a small four-wheel drive off-road prototype with capabilities similar to an ATV. The main difference between this and an ATV is that two people can sit side by side instead of in a straddle position, giving it the name Side by Side or SSV. It's a popular vehicle in the Middle East and the fastest growing category in the rally. So for Dakar, I had an Italian co pilot. His name is Iaco. He's a dirt bike champion in Italy. It's his second time co piloting. So his first time was with me in Hayen, and then the second time was in Dakar. So for sure, it was a learning curve for both of us. The T3 limit is 135. The T4 limit is 125. And I think the T1 limit is 170. And then the trucks, the trucks, I think they go. I'm not sure about the trucks, honestly, but I think it's around 180. I'm not sure. But my limit is 135. And as soon as I exceed that limit, I get a penalty and I lose minutes. They have a system in the vehicle. Once you reach 130, you'll hear the system just peeps, beep, 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 beep. So that when you know you're really close to the speed limit. So it's really crucial to, to control it. During the race, the driver and co-driver have to do their own maintenance without outside help. If the engine breaks down and needs replacing, the team is disqualified. Honestly, I know the basics. Like I know how to change a belt, change a tire, check the oil, those simple things. But when you dig deep, no, I'm trying to learn. And it's, you know, it's a journey. I'll take it step by step. In between the different stages of the rally, drivers gather in the bivouac, a temporary camp that can only be accessed by people with proper accreditation. So... Uh, in the Dakar, we have something called the bivouac. So basically, it's like it's the camp where everyone stays. Uh, you'll find all the racing vehicles there because we have different kind of vehicles. We have T1, T2, T3, T4, T5. We have trucks, we have bikes, we have quads. So we all gather in that bivouac and we all sleep there. And each one has their own pre- preference. Some sleep in tents, some sleep in RVs. So it's up to every race, right? And that bivouac is literally copied and pasted to the next area we're going to. So every time we, we finish our race, we all gather in a bivouac. Uh, they have a big catering area, uh, fireplace, uh, bathroom, showers. It's fully equipped. It's just like, just like camping. Michelle finished the rally in 17th place out of 37 teams in her category. The overall winner of the rally, 51-year-old Qatar native Nasser Alatia, earned a $45,000 cash prize and a $450,000 sponsor bonus. On February 14th, 2022, Michelle completed the Baja Russia Rally in the Northern Forest, this time on snow and ice. Ten days later, Russia invaded Ukraine. Who knows whether she'll be able to take part again next year, but in the meantime, she's eyeing more races around the world. First is the speed, the adventure, uh, the unknown, the unexpected. Because, you know, in rallies, we don't have a, a, a clear track, not like racing in, in Formula or other races where you have a track and you go around and around. It's pretty exciting. Don't get me wrong, but rallies is, is more different because I love nature and I love the element of not knowing because we don't know the way. And we got the road, we get the road book literally like a couple of minutes before the stage. And uh, for me, that's really exciting. So it's speed, it's adventure, it's nature. All those combined together just... What makes rallying amazing? I don't see like, yeah, I'm a Saudi woman, I did that. No, I see like, I've achieved a goal, I've achieved a dream, and I cannot wait to achieve the next one. That's how I see it. To find out more about Michelle, follow her on Instagram at MN Alubaidan. And if you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to like it and follow us on whatever platform you're listening on. You can find me on Instagram at NadiaMichelle underscore. See you soon.